and welcome to today's issue of Cancer Uncensored. Hi, I'm Chris and I'm the author of Cancer Uncensored, a step-by-step -step guide to cancer prevention, early detection and cancer survival. In today's video, I'm going to give you an overview of cancer. I'm going to briefly talk about what cancer is, what causes it, what the symptoms are and how you can actively prevent it. We'll also cover current treatment options and alternative medicine. I'll also let you know where you can get the most recent up-to-date news and breakthroughs. Before we get stuck in, I should address two points. Firstly, people are terrified of cancer. I can entirely understand that as my own wife has cancer. But as a society, we mustn't let the fear of the condition stop us from taking steps to fully understand it, because that way we can actively prevent it. One in three of us will be diagnosed with cancer within our lifetimes, and yet 85% of cancer is preventable. This video and my book, Cancer Uncensored, will tell you how. So absorb as much of this information as you can because it could save your life. Secondly, you must understand that cancer isn't fully understood. We have a number of very solid theories and a lot of study data, but if cancer was fully understood, then we'd be much closer to a cure. As Thomas Edison once said, the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. But as things currently stand, there are significant vested interests in the medical and pharmaceutical industries which do not help to facilitate true impartial research. Cancer represents a three quarters of a trillion dollar or half a trillion pound per year industry worldwide. For the cancer establishment, if you have cancer, you're worth over a quarter of a million dollars or 150,000 pounds. But if you're healthy, then you aren't even a customer. Just think about that for a moment. So whilst you'll believe that your doctor has interests or your best interests at heart, the industry as a whole perhaps does not. In fact, doctors in the Western world are legally obliged to recommend surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy as their treatments exclusively and won't even comment on the most fundamental of things such as diet and lifestyle, which may have triggered the cancer in the first place, let alone address alternative medicine, which actually has a reasonable track record. So you need to get educated and fast. So what is cancer? Basically, cancer is when cells in your body, um, which can lit literally be in any tissue or organ, malfunction by dividing excessively and invading surrounding tissues. You have literally hundreds of thousands of cancer cells in your body at any one moment in time, even right now. But usually, when your immune system detects them, it destroys them. If your immune system can't destroy them quickly enough or doesn't function correctly, then a gathering of cells called a tumour can grow. As the tumour establishes its own blood supply, it grows and it can then spread to other parts of your body. But there are things you can do at each stage to slow this process down. The signs and symptoms vary depending on what type of cancer you have, but a general list of symptoms might include a lump anywhere in your body, for example in, a, in your breast or testicle, a change in a skin mole, a sore that won't heal, a persistent cough or hoarseness, a persistent indigestion or difficulty swallowing, coughing up or vomiting blood or changes in normal bowel habits such as persistent diarrhea or constipation, or any bleeding in the you know, urine or bowel motions or, or any abnormal vaginal bleeding. Finally, unexplained weight loss or an unexplained loss of appetite could be a potential indicator. In theory, cancer can be triggered by three things. Firstly, when your body doesn't have the raw materials to function correctly, such as vitamins, minerals, oils and plant compounds. Secondly, uh, when you're exposed to harmful environmental factors such as pesticides, cigarette smoke, radon gas, electromagnetic fields, and thirdly, perhaps due to genetic factors. But genetic factors account for less than 10% of cancer, and even then studies show that diet can overcome a predisposition. The good news is we know of lots of different foods that kill cancer cells and lots of foods that have been shown in studies to reduce the likelihood of you getting them in the first place. Prevention is key, but these foods will also help to support your body if you've already been diagnosed. This video is too brief to list them all, but if you visit www.canceruncensored.com, you can learn more. In short, adding cruciferous and green leafy vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds and flaxseed oil to your diet can make a big difference. In fact, a handful of almonds per day can reduce your risk of lung cancer from smoking by a whopping 35%. In my book, I provide an A to Z of anti-cancer superfoods that you really must add to your diet. Some of these foods are so simple, you'll kick yourself for not adding them to your diet sooner. 
For those diagnosed with cancer, you absolutely need my book. It tells you of the clinical studies showing which foods actually shrink tumours and kill cancer cells as well as chemotherapy, but without any side effects. For example, curcumin and turmeric has been shown in over 11 peer-reviewed studies to shrink brain cancer tumours by an average of 81% in just a couple of months. So whilst your doctor will recommend chemotherapy, radiotherapy or surgery, you also need to be aware of what else is out there. Because unfortunately, the US Department of Health and many other institutions agree that chemotherapy and radiotherapy are themselves carcinogenic. Give them to a healthy person and they're much more likely to get cancer. So how can these be the solution? That's where alternative medicine comes in. My book discusses the merits and failings of alternative medicine and what you can do at home. Much of this is actually sound science, but it's yet to become mainstream medicine. And some discoveries have even been actively suppressed because it hurts the income of the pharmaceutical industry. Mainstream medicine is far from perfect. For example, did you know that the US RDA for vitamin C was based upon studying just 22 people for three weeks? In fact, even when citrus fruit was discovered to cure and prevent scurvy in sailors, over 200 years went by and over a million deaths before doctors advocated taking oranges on ocean voyages. In 1931, Dr. Otto Warburg won the Nobel Prize for proving that cancer cannot survive in an alkaline, oxygen-rich environment. He showed that cancer, in fact, thrives in an acidic, low-oxygen environment. We know that most individuals with cancer are deficient in a range of vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, fibre and enzymes. This makes it harder for a person's immune system and body to function as it should. We know that a wide range of natural dietary compounds can also inhibit or even um, kill cancer cells. We know that most individuals with cancer do less exercise and therefore spend less time with their bodies well oxygenated. We know that many cancer patients' bodies are overtaxed with toxins and their body needs assistance to remove them. We also know that cancer cells absolutely love sugar. In fact, cancer cells have been shown to have 96 sugar receptor sites where normal healthy cells only have four. Unfortunately, a high sugar diet also lowers your body's pH, making your body more acidic and cancer friendly. Finally, studies have shown that many cancer patients have suffered an emotional trauma in the recent past or have unresolved emotional issues, just like a persistent allergy, persistent underlying emotional stress is also able to cause a dip in your immune system and an excess of free radicals, which could create a window for cancer to take hold. Alternative medicine and monitoring your diet tackles all of these areas. It aims to make your body a hostile environment for cancer cells to live. If you're looking for great health, to lose weight, to potentially ditch your medication and statistically extend your life, then Cancer Uncensored is for you. It contains simple things that anyone can do for better health. If you've already been diagnosed, you need Cancer Uncensored to help your body fight back and to know what to avoid. I even cover the foods shown to make your cancer grow faster so that you can avoid them. Either way, it's time to get educated for the good of your health and for the good of your loved ones. Visit www.canceruncensored.com for news, articles, video and to get my book, Cancer Uncensored. Thanks for watching.